What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, and in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I did today in the markets, as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade right now in October, heading into the month of November in 2019. One stock in particular that's actually down pretty big right now after hours that I've been wanting to build a position here in this particular stock in the stock market for quite some time now. So if you want to see that stock and the other stocks, stick around for a couple of minutes. We'll get into that a little bit down the road in this video. And all I ask from you is if you enjoy this content, you enjoy the analysis, you enjoy the YouTube videos here, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing and join our Strive Smart Discord group chat and our Strive Smart Facebook group. That's how you can be further connected with me and our entire community of a thousand plus investors and traders on a day-to-day -day basis. So without further ado, guys, let's just get right into it here, starting off with the SPX, the S&P 500, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies. It ended up closing the day up $5.77, up about 0.2%, 0.19% to be exact. And if we zoom in a bit to the one day, one minute, you can see there was some choppy trading today. We gapped up to 3016, we sold off to 3000, gapped up again to 3015, sold back down to 3000. So we were just moving up and down, it feels like, throughout the entire day. You know, from this point, we ran back up to 3008, sold off again to that 3000 point, then ended up closing the day on a nice upswing, finishing, as you can see, at around 3000. And 10 bucks. But despite the fact that we were choppy again, we only ended up closing the day up five points. Pretty boring in terms of, you know, the market's performance at the close. But despite that, there were individual stocks that we'll talk about in this video, like I mentioned, that did do well and that did do pretty poorly today. Again, despite the markets being just kind of flat, right? And if we go back to that four hour chart, you can see, you know, we're still above this little, you know, wedge ascending triangle. We're looking to get to that all-time high, which is at 3027, but we're really just kind of just hovering at this point. We we're really not making a you know, definitive move to the upside quite yet. We're not making a definitive move to the downside, which again is why I'm saying these markets have just been a bit boring if we're just looking at the major markets, right? On the SPX, you know, we've been hovering around this 2980 to around 3015 mark, mark for the past really like eight to 10 trading days at this point, as you can see from these candlesticks here on this 30 minute chart. So what I'm watching for and what I'm waiting for is really a big move to the upside or a big move to the downside to pick some direction here. I know overall the trajectory right now on the S&P is up based on this hourly chart, right? We're holding that 50 SMA. We're still technically uptrending. Today we hit a higher high here at 3016. But again, I want to see a definitive move, right? I want to see a massive move to the upside to break that all-time high. That would obviously be bullish. At that point, we may be obviously going to more all-time highs, right? But let's say on the flip side, we get a down downwards move. I'd need to see a definitive break back into 29.90 and really a move down to about 29.50. That would be telling me the bears are becoming in charge at that point, and we may be seeing further downside from there. Going to the Dow Jones Industrial Average today, guys, it ended up closing down 28 points. It was red down about point one one percent and a lot of people may argue this is because of 3m 3m reported earnings today this is a dow stock they were down about four percent i think they did dip down to the 150s yes they did they reported earnings and just out of curiosity and obviously i looked at it this morning but i forget but just just out of curiosity for you guys that didn't look at this they actually beat on eps 
258 versus 249, but they missed on sales, and obviously they they uh, actually cut their guidance as well, which is negative, very very negative in my opinion um, for 3M and honestly any company out there um, for the future, right? And for the short term future at least. So 3M had a big weight on the Dow Jones Industrial Average today. Again, down about 30 points at the close. It seems like we're getting closer and closer now to this 26,600. Dollar level of support, which I would watch as a very critical support for the Dow. If we break that, we may be going down to test maybe the support of this wedge here. If we break that, we may be going down to test 26.2. Under that, it's going to be around 25.6. But let's not get ahead of ourselves because first we need to break 26.6 before we even get these next support levels in our minds and really think that the S or the, the Dow will get to those, right? And let's say on the up upside, we break this, you know, wedge that you're seeing, the resistance, the ascending triangle pop here. Let's say we get that bullish move, like you guys can see based on this arrow here, that could be what we need to see to fill the gap up to that all-time high resistance and maybe even get to a new all-time high on the Dow Jones. And again, just like the S&P guys, pretty boring of a day, choppy trading and uh, so forth. The NASDAQ right now is up 24 points, up 0.3%. If we zoom into the one day, one minute, you guys can see massive drop off here after hours. And that is because one company reported pretty bad earnings pretty bad earnings, right? They cut guidance as well. And that is causing this, in my opinion, to drop here. And again, we'll talk about that particular company in a couple of minutes here and drop a comment down below. Guess, guess, let's see if you could guess it. Drop a comment right now. Pause the video. Guess what stock is dropping this? You probably know already if, if you're watching this in the future, which obviously you will be because when it's uploaded to YouTube, it's in the future and that's when you'll be watching it, right? So let's go to the 20 day, one hour chart on the NQ. Pretty strong resistance here at around 79.88,000 like we've been talking about in these videos. So I'd watch for that break to then get to that all-time high at around 80.50. The support that I'm watching right now is at around 78.80, which we held it a couple of times over the past couple of weeks. So I'd watch that as a critical support. If we break that, that's not going to be too good for the bulls out there. We may be going back down to 7,700 to test the support on this trend line here. If we break that we may be going down to 7500 but again let's not get ahead of ourselves so overall that's what the markets did today in terms of the nasdaq the s p the dow let me know down below what are your thoughts on the markets do you think we're going up from here do you think there's more downside from here do you think we'll be flat for the next couple of weeks next couple of days i'd love to know what you guys have to think about that so let's do a trading update what did i do today guys well i ended up selling out of procter and gamble it was about a two to three day swing trade so i locked in those profits if you guys have been following the channel for the past couple of days you know that i entered in procter and gamble on this dip the day they reported earnings they dipped from 125 down to about 121.50 i bought in at 121.90 that's pretty much really the, the 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 position that I built. I didn't really add much to it, to be honest with you all, because I put a sizable chunk, you know, in the beginning here. Typically, I'm scaling in with 20, 30% initially with my swing trades. But since I had a lot of confidence in PG, they actually beat on earnings. They dipped, which was really, really odd in my opinion. Actually, no, it's not odd. You know, I, I could have expected that. I, I expected it a little bit because, you know, profit taking kicked in. So it's not too odd of a move here, but it opened up a perfect opportunity for me after good earnings. Again, they beat on EPS and Rev. So that was good, right? So I ended up going a bit heavier than I normally would again. And that's mostly due to the confidence that I had with PG. Do I recommend you guys to do that? Go heavier right up front, you know, in terms of a position? No, right? You don't have to do that. Do what's 
comfortable for you. I'm just here sharing with you all what I personally did. So from 121.90, I sold off today at about 125 bucks. And to be honest, guys, this was a massive run up today. I was not expecting this. This went from 123.40 and it hit an all time high. It made a 2% move here in the matter of a couple of hours. So I honestly sold off a bit before this pop to the all time high. I think it was down here at about like 125.10 or something like that. But anyway, you know, I sold off right, right at this point. And if we go back to that five day, five minute, we can see my move from 121. 90 up to where I sold off. It's close to 3%, more like 2.6 to about 2.7%, but that's really good. That's gravy for me in a, in, in a span of three days. I cannot complain with that. Really, really good. The next trade that I took, which was a bit more risky here, was in Visa today. In Visa, pretty interesting, right? PayPal reported earnings yesterday. They did very well. They were actually up 8 9% this morning. And PayPal and Visa, they're kind of in the same bunch of uh, companies, right? They're, they're very similar in terms of, uh, you know, the companies. And we can see that Visa was actually doing quite well pre-market and after-market hours yesterday because PayPal, in my opinion, influenced it, right? We can see PayPal reported earnings and this shot up. Typically, not always, but sometimes when a similar company to, let's say, you know, in this case, PayPal reports earnings, a similar company's Visa, let's say PayPal does really well in earnings, which it did, sometimes it can influence the companies that are similar, right? And then in this case, that's what I think happened. Visa started to pop up after hours yesterday, started to pop up today, in, you know, pre-market session. And that really triggered me to take a position this morning. And where I got a bit more risky is I actually didn't sell my entire position before the earnings report, which is what I typically do. I felt kind of risky today in terms of I bought in this morning at around 174 I think it was 70 ish right around here I sold half of my position before market close and I actually am holding half of my position with the goal to sell it tomorrow and the fact that they beat on earnings is very good in my opinion now because I think there's a lot of potential that Visa can do quite well for the rest of the week. You know, we can see here, and honestly, next week as well, we can see here, it popped up to 180, it pulled down, it's still holding that 50 SMA support and rising here after market hours. So I do have confidence holding this one tomorrow. Maybe I'll even sell it next week, you know, depending on how the price action is tomorrow, we'll obviously see. But their EPS was $1.47, and that actually beat the 143 estimate, so that's really good. Their sales, a AKA revenue also beat six uh, six point one three billion revenue versus the six point oh eight billion estimate. So that's really good. And, um, you know, I feel comfortable. Again, I feel comfortable holding this one. I got in initially 174.70. I sold off literally as we were running up, you know, into the market close just to lock in some profits to just kind of play it safe. About 1% of profits there that we can see the dump off here. We actually got all the way down to 170. I don't know how that happened, but, and then we ended up popping up to about 180. Now we're selling off again and holding. Hopefully, I can end up selling out tomorrow, either at 180 or maybe next week as it kind of cools off a bit, you know, maybe consolidates and slowly finds its way back up. Maybe I can sell even higher, right? But, you know, getting into Visa, looking at some levels of resistance, you know, we have 180, like I mentioned, we have 182, we have 183, and that all time high at about 187, which again, these are just some targets that I might be selling. And of course, I'll let you guys know in these market and trading update videos. So overall, that's what I ended up doing today, guys, in terms of my trading. And there's another stock like you guys read in the title, down pretty big here after hours. They reported earnings as well that I'm looking to build a position in here, you know, maybe in my swing account and most definitely in my long-term position account where I'm looking to hold companies for years on end. And that company, guys, is Amazon, ticker symbol AMZ. 
N. And guys, a lot of people, when they see stocks tank, they get really nervous. They're like, oh my goodness, this is very bad. But that's where the money's made at the end of the day, right? People buy into weakness, hold into the long term, and that is how they make money a lot of the time, right? And we can see here Amazon slowly recovering here after hours from the initial dump. But that initial dump was about a 10% move to the downside at the bottom here. Now it's down about 6 to 7% after hours which is still massive right and that opened up again that margin of profit really that that I'm looking for to start building a position here in Amazon and you may be asking yourself what the heck happened with Amazon I have some notes here on my phone very brief about their earnings report and some things that really caused the stock to fall here. So Amazon's third quarter earnings fell short of street expectations, driving its stock down as much as 9%, like I just said, in the aftermarket sessions. The company is spending million dollar, uh, millions of dollars to expand its free one-day delivery program, which I believe the earnings they just reported, this is the full quarter earnings of them having that one-day delivery program from the two-day to the one-day for certain products, certain categories, stuff like that, right? Amazon gave fourth quarter revenue guidance in the range of 80 billion to 86 billion. And this is where I believe, you know, this is the catalyst that I believe dropped the stock, which is below the street's estimate of 87 billion or 87.4 billion to be exact and they're indicating the all-important holiday shopping season may be underwhelming which is kind of concerning for the economy as well because when the economy is slowing down obviously people are not spending as much so this could be showing us signs of us nearing the end of the economic cycle which a lot of us already know and uh, we're getting some results showing that from the major companies of the world Amazon being obviously one of the major ones where a lot of people shop because of their e-commerce platform, especially during the holiday season. So that's a bit concerning, right? Their guidance got cut, but this is good again for us long-term people out there that have a vision. This is when you want to buy into a stock when they're cutting guidance, when they're a bit weak. Because at the end of the day, if the business model is strong, still the fundamentals are intact, this is a perfect time to buy if the stock price is going down and you still see that long-term vision, right? EPS came in at $4.23 versus $4.62 expected. So they just blew it on EPS, right? Revenue they beat, $70 billion versus $68.8 billion. So that's pretty good. Amazon Web Services, which is arguably the most important segment of their business right now, one of the biggest growing segments of their business, $9 billion versus $9.1 billion, according to analysts. So they ended up missing on that. Revenue grew 24% to $70 billion for the quarter, showing the heavy investments across the company are paying off. Amazon spent over $800 million in the second quarter to expand its free one-day delivery program to more products and regions, and is expected to continue investing in the program program for the foreseeable future. It also pointed to increased spending on the growing cloud business and bolstering its advertisement service. The return to a heavy investment cycle is cutting into Amazon's profitability, which is also a reason why I believe we're seeing some short-term weakness here. But this is good, right? They're investing in the business for the future growth. Of course, the business is going to take a short-term hit. Of course, they're going to see short-term weakness if they're investing in the future and using that capital to fuel that growth. So again, another reason to buy into the company, in my personal opinion, it's operating income dropped to 3.2 billion down 15% from the year uh, ago period, which was 3.7 billion for the fourth quarter. Amazon is forecasting operating income to fall between 1.2 to 2.9 billion, also below the 4.2 billion street estimates. So those are just some highlights from Amazon's, uh, you know, earnings at this point. Point. Of course, I'm going to do a deeper dive into them myself later on after I finish filming this video, and I'm sure you guys have an opinion on these earnings as well, so feel free to drop them down below, but again...
I'm looking to buy this stock maybe in the next couple of weeks. Let's say it gets a bit weaker here. I want to see what it ends up doing. You know, maybe an initial position and maybe my M1 Finance account, you know, I might do that for you guys and show you all how I'm going to build out that position. You know, that's going to be interesting because in that portfolio, and I'll link it down below, I've been wanting to put some growth stocks in there. So this could be an interesting spot to get in. But overall, you know, if we look at some levels, levels on Amazon here and then we'll get into the other stocks I'm watching. You know, we may be going down to about 1590 here in the short term if we go back to that one year one day chart, we may be going down to a level let's say like 1480. I don't know if we'll get this low to be honest guys, but just drawing them out just so we get a visual here of what may be going on. You know, if we get down to here, I'm loading the truck up on Amazon and all my accounts, no doubt if we get down to about 1300. If we get down to the 15s, I might start scaling in a little bit, right? 16, low 16s, that's a spot that I'll scale in as well. But overall, those are just my thoughts. And again, I'd love to know what you guys have to think down below in the comment section. So that other company that reported is Visa, guys. Obviously, I already talked about them a couple of minutes ago. They beat on, you know, what was it? On revenue and EPS, they beat. And this is an interesting stock to watch as it's in a horizontal pattern at this point with the beat now on revenue and EPS. This can send the stock up again, like I mentioned, to levels like 180, 182, 184, 185, even maybe 188 and higher to even more all-time highs from there, right? So this is worth watching. Very, very good in my opinion. CMG Chipotle Mexican Grill on the dip right now is looking good, especially since it's holding this trend that I have on the four-hour chart. And if we zoom out a bit to that one-year, one-day chart, you can see it's also holding it you know, on that time frame as well. And this is a pretty sizable dip on Chipotle, guys. This is not like a 1%, 2% dip. This is pretty big of about 7 to 8% dip. You know, uh, at this point where we are right now, it's probably a bit a bit lower than that, more like 6 to 7%. But this is a good amount of profit margin open that it's worth watching at this point, right? It's one of those companies that kind of like PG over the four-hour chart, it's been uptrending, right? We go to PG. PG, you can see every time it pulls down, it goes to an all-time high. So CMG, it's in the same scenario right here where we pulled down from 860, holding that trend line, up, opened up about a 6-7% margin. You know, this is one worth watching 100% here. So the other one is going to be, what is it, guys? I think it's PayPal. PayPal, this is, again, one of those companies similar to Visa. They did well in earnings yesterday. Visa did well today. And, uh, you know, I'm interested in playing this one, maybe even more than Visa at this point. Um, you know, obviously I'm already in Visa, but this one has more potential in my opinion than Visa. This one has 13% to the all-time high here from the levels we're at right now. And I think a cre uh, key break here would be the pop above this 180 SMA resistance as we're honestly already doing at this point. We're already above it. We're looking at kind of this kind of looks like a bull flag in my opinion as well. We're looking to do something like this tomorrow. And if that happens, that's going to be really my, my, my alert, my trigger to go long on PayPal and just hold some shares for the next month or two to see if this thing ends up recovering. I think there's a lot of potential again, due to the earnings beat, you know, th this is just worth watching, right? PayPal ticker symbol P Y P L. And let me pull up my phone to see if there are any other ones here that I want to share with you all. That's pretty much it. Actually, Tesla, that's another one, T-S-L-A here. Tesla's one that we talked about yesterday. I said, I'm not looking to buy it quite yet. I think it's going to cool off. Profit taking is going to kick in. And that's exactly what ended up happening, right? We peaked at about 308 bucks. And now we're pulling down to that first level of support that I have drawn out here and that we talked about in yesterday's video at around 294 bucks. And if we zoom in a bit to the one day you guys can see we actually held 290 to around 294 consolidated on that level so it's interesting to see here you know are we going to hold 290 maybe fill the gap or rather 300 299 ish and fill the gap back up to 308 bucks that could be a potential day trade tomorrow if we do get the confirmation um you know like it, let's say it's trending up pre-market that would be a good confirmation you know that's something that could 
happen. But me personally, guys, I'm probably going to stick to the sidelines on Tesla. I think if you're not already in, the move, at least in the short term, has been missed. I think there's more potential in Chipotle, PayPal, you know, uh, what's the other one? Visa, you know, even stocks like... Um, Johnson and Johnson at this point, I see more potential in than a Tesla, right? Because that this one's at a support 127, uh, uh, you know, a boatload of room to run up here, back up to the 130s, 135s, 140s. You know, I think J&J &J has more potential. So overall, guys, those are just a couple of stocks and ETFs. My thoughts on Amazon, you know, me probably I'm going to be buying it too. So let me know down below if you think that you're going to buy it, uh, if you think I'm an idiot for buying here there's more downside to come let me know down below in the comments what do you guys think about that and if you enjoyed the video all i ask from you to do for you to do is to go down below hit that like button and consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me and don't forget guys join our strive smart discord group chat and our strive smart facebook group those are linked down below and you'll be able to talk to me throughout the market day and all of our members and trust me guys there's a lot of people in there 100 free of charge we're talking all day about stocks, investing, trading, all of that good stuff. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.